welcome back to the Orchid Pergola. I wanted to discuss today what happens if you want to go out and buy a bag baby. Hi guys, my name is Melissa. Welcome back to the Orchid Pergola. Welcome to my channel, Melissa Loves Orchids. I love orchids. And one thing that I have learned is that you can get beautiful orchids at your big box stores. Yes, you can. So there is a little bit of controversy out there. Some people will tell you that those orchids are kind of like the, the very unhealthy ones that the nurseries don't want to sell. I've heard that. I've heard that they all have um, pests. I've heard that they're all dried out. I've heard, what else have I heard? They'll never bloom for you. I've heard that they're all seedlings and they'll take two to three years to bloom. Well, if you go on the website, you can debunk that myth already because that's not the case. They do sell smaller ones that they do say maybe 24 months or so, but those are the really tiny ones. In Miami, where I live, those are around $10. But if you buy the ones that are $17, you never know when they're gonna bloom. And sometimes you can get them at a really large size and they will bloom quickly. Now, I wanna give you, before I show you this one, before I start talking about the tips, because this whole video is just about the tips that I've learned so far. But I wanna give you an example. So if you're one of those people that thinks, no, you can only get good orchids at a proper orchid nursery, that's not always the case. And it's not always the case that they're gonna take years and years to bloom. I wanna show you an example of one that I bought, and three months later, this beautiful orchid has bloomed for me this beautiful bloom now if you always not if you always if you watch my videos you're gonna see that i've already shown her she is still in bloom she smells delicious oh my gosh she smells delicious and i bought this cork mount i put her on there look at her roots attached she acclimated and bloomed i love it you can totally do the same thing now let's go over some tips so i had some people tell me that one of the best things to do is to make friends with the um the person who's in charge of ordering okay so sometimes that's not one person i have talked to a couple of people who do the ordering at my local home depot and and it's it varies sometimes what they order, how much they order, and a lot of it has to do with how much is still there. So I recently went to one that wasn't the one that's a mile away from my house, and the person there told me, you know, these end up drying up, nobody buys them, so we only get like maybe max five bag babies. And usually they stay here, they dry up, nobody buys them. I was like, well, not true. I buy them, I buy them, but so they try to do it like that. They try to order based on how much is there. If it's a whole tray full and they're dying and drying up, then they order less. So that makes a lot of sense, the supply and demand. And sometimes, you know, you look at what's left and you're like, well, they're not buying it. There's no reason to order more. That makes sense. But here's the thing. There are times that people go in and will buy five back babies and then the person will say okay next time we order 10. so our conversation was very light i didn't want to you know harass the woman with 10 million questions she was like why do you want to know but um yeah so it's supply and demand if they stay there nobody seems like they want them they're not going to order more the next time so it kind of varies and it depends on where the locations are sometimes you know like the one that i live close to everybody loves the bag babies they have not one but three trays they have the regular stand and then underneath they have the tray and i'll put in a picture of what it normally looks like the little ones on top the van is in the middle and then the cats in the bottom the four inch cats in the bottom then around the corner where they have the phalaenopsis they have another big tray and i'm talking about a big tray bigger than this like double this all you know set up with the four inch cats then maybe 
a row or two down where they have, you know, the, the ones that are put in baskets, they have another tray. So I'm really lucky that I have that right there. And um, apparently I'm not the only one that goes to shop at that one because they are, con it's like a revolving door. The only problem is that when you go often, like I do, they're only gonna have four or five different varieties. And they're gonna keep that same four or five for a few months. So right now, if I go there, I know what they have, which is a little crazy. But I went there yesterday and everything that they had, I know this is gonna sound crazy. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm, a, I'm still gonna call myself a beginner. I'm gonna give myself like five years. After the five year mark, I won't call myself a beginner anymore, but I still feel like I'm a beginner and I still have that rush feeling of collecting and expanding the collection. I don't know when it's gonna stop. My husband hopes that that feeling will stop soon, but I don't know. So anyways, I went to my local Home Depot yesterday and I literally had every single bag baby that they had for sale. And I'm sorry if I'm squinting, but it is 86 degrees, muggy, and all of a sudden the clouds have parted because it's been raining for five days straight, but the clouds have parted right now when I wanna make this video for you guys and um it's like hitting me in the <laughs> in the eyeballs so anyways um yeah i have every single one that my local home depot has right now so it's good and bad good in that i said okay now i don't feel like there's something that i need and i can hold my horses until the next show or the next fair which is coming up next this weekend coming up at ofis by the way if you're local if you're not drive over here join us you'll have fun at Oldies, um the 22nd and 23rd um and i'll put that picture if you want to see the vendors that are attending so it's going to be a good show it's always a good show so i said today i said you know i kind of felt like i had that feeling of i want to make that video of the tips but i need to go out and actually go through the thing so i can come home and talk about it you know for the video not not because i need another orchid so I went a little bit further out and I found, and this Home Depot, um, and I'm not gonna say which one it is because I'm not here to bash. Oh my goodness, the wind. I'm not here to bash, but this is the one with the poorest, not quality, but um, condition of bag babies. All the bag babies there are either dried up or they're sopping wet or they're just completely like shaken out of the bag. I don't know what happens there. Someone goes in there and starts, I don't know what happens there. But every time I've gone to this certain Home Depot, um, yeah, they're not taken care of. Like at my Home Depot, which is close, it seems like they're all pristine standing. Someone is actually caring for them. And a lot of them are watered and, and, and I never have, sometimes I go into Home Depot and I'm going like this and I'm shaking out the water or like there was one day when it was raining so bad, it was like flooded. And luckily I had my Crocs on, I had my Crocs on. You can see, my Crocs on, I still can see, oh well. I had my Crocs on and I was literally ankle high in water because I had seen the Phalaenopsis table. Every fowl was knocked over. And I said, oh no, there was a guy behind the counter like nothing and and I was like, oh no, this can't be. So I start picking them up before I know it. I have picked up every single fowl in the fowl table. And the guy's around the corner looking at me like, who is that? Is that a new employee that I haven't met? I know it's the weirdest thing. And I'm like, no, I just, they were, they, they had fallen down and I wasn't gonna leave it there. He looked at me like, you are such a weirdo, but I couldn't leave him like that. Anyways, <sighs> if I could stop going off on tangents, I could talk about the tips. So, can we get to it? Can we get to the tips? Here, here we go. So when you're looking for a bag baby, first of all, try to find something that you don't have, um, unless you love it. Something that you don't already have a lot of, because you know, you want it to be special. I didn't have one like this. I saw this picture and I was like, hey, wait a minute. So it says spotted novelty catlea. Catlea novedosa manchada. Hmm. So 
well that was interesting that was interesting and then you think to yourself well this is what you're gonna get and it ve it, it may be but it varies it could be something like this but then you have to look around you see that that is the specific name of the orchid that you have in the bag. So you can sort of go by more or less if it has spots, if it's in the same color range or whatever. But you can't say that this is the exact one. Now, when I Google the picture, which is actually tip number two, Google the picture, Google, put in the name on this tag, on the inner tag. It's pretty similar, but sometimes it's very off. And the only thing about it is that it has a little bit of flaring, but the colors are completely different. It could be very different than the tag, which it happens because they're not gonna make one of these for every single specific orchid. They're gonna make one that is in the pinkish range and that's about it, in the red right? or, or yellow and reds and, and that's about it, or spotted. And there's a bunch of different kind of spotted ones. So. First tip, find something that catches your eye. Take a look at the outer tag and not only that, okay? Then you're gonna grab it. But after you found that, tip number two is Google the tag. So when you take out the tag, and I know sometimes I've had people tell me, but the tag is deep in there and you can't see it. A lot of times it's just like this. And then there's a hole in this bag, see? There's a hole in this bag. So you can go like this and take a look. And if you can't take a look, put it back and get another one that you can see. Because unless you really want a surprise, I don't know about you, but I wanna see what I'm buying, you know? And then it also gives you a chance to peek at the roots, which this one, I honestly, this one I got for you guys. I didn't buy this one for me. <laughs> this is for the viewers. This is for the viewers so I can make this video. Yes, I, I, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So it says LC Landate Charm Spot 2019. So 2019, I bought one or two or a few or whatever. I bought some that are 2022. So 2019 already gives me the impression that this is an older one. This one has been around and might bloom sooner because of the date, okay? Usually the date is the um, the date of the flasking. Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look. Let's get into it. So what do we say already? Let's recap. Look at this. Find something that catches your eye. Then take out the tag, or at least look at the tag. Then you Google that tag. You see if it is anything like this. If it's not, I mean, you really have to make a decision on whether it's in the wrong, you have the wrong tag, that could be it. Or if you just have some kind of a mix up, but usually what's on here. And sometimes, unfortunately, you're gonna find one of these, no tag. I have a couple in here that I'm just crossing my fingers. Whenever it blooms, I have no idea what it's gonna be because it was when I first started and I just grabbed it and I didn't even look for an inner tag. So of course, next step, you take it out and you feel the weight. Feel the weight. Now this one, guys, like I said, I bought this one for you. This one's very light, very light. What does that tell me? Listen to this. This is dry. This is pretty dry. Now, I also take a look at the pseudobulbs and they look on the wrinkly side. So, but for you guys, I said, let me just do it for them. Let me do it for them, not for me. Um, I'm gonna try to rehydrate it, okay? So you feel the weight. Before you leave, compare them. Don't get the lightest one that they have, okay? Try to shop around because if you get the lightest one, chances are that one's been there the longest. It's been a little neglected. It's gonna need a lot of rehydration. So I don't wanna make this video too long, but save this because you could use it. And I don't know if you can see, I used it when I did this mount and it is holding, it's almost like I put a little handful of moss here. And then I attach this to the mount. 
and it provides the extra moisture that that plant needed. So the next part is obviously gonna be checking it out. Now this is the time when you have to say, okay, it's worth it for me to try to rehydrate and keep it or it's, it's not looking good at all and I need to take it back. So I did make another video where I was kind of annoyed at a woman that I had found that had taken back orchids and kind of did the orchid recycling and just taken back the orchids without flowers and got new orchids. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, yes, sometimes, unfortunately, you're gonna get a plant that looks okay when it's all wrapped up and then you open it up and it has like zero root system or something is, is very wrong. I mean, this one looks like it can be saved. It looks, it's a bifoliate, so I know that this one is a little bit more finicky when it comes to roots and all that. So, but you can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You cannot be afraid to, to do what you gotta do, right? So I'm going to take her out of here, show you what we're working with, and then decide if I'm gonna mount her, if I'm going to, I want to mount her because I know that like um, the other ones that I have that are this same style. I don't have a Walkeriana, but I have an Alclandier. I have a Pecanvensis and they like to be mounted and they kind of spread out kind of like they're like walking, right? Very horizontal and um, they do better in pots. So I've been told and I've seen because I have mounted the ones that I have and they really like it and they take to that mount quickly. So. I think this one's gonna get a mount for sure. And um, let's see what we're working with. Now, one of the things that I noticed is that there was a lot of roots coming out of the pot, but at the same time, these roots seem very dry. So when I take her out, and shake her out a bit. This is what we're working with. And get rid of this. Keep this little tag for your collection like I do, just for fun. Usually you're gonna get this, you're gonna get the uh, peanuts. It doesn't look that bad, but I don't see green root tips, which is what you wanna see when you're about to repot. Let me give it a little soak, a little dip. And a lot of people like to hit it with Something like this, like this, like Fizan 20. Um, and a lot of people like to hit it with the hydrogen peroxide also. So it's up to you. I'm just giving it a little soak right here off camera so I can take a look and see if I have some green roots. It's the only way you're gonna see what you're working with. Okay, I know some people that um, have a much longer acclimation period and I, I think eventually I will get there where I've developed the self-control that I let them acclimate for the proper amount of time. What even is the proper amount of time? I don't even know. I really am not quite sure. But I've heard even someone had said six months. Six months acclimating to your environment in the same little pot that they came in. If I give it a couple of days, I feel like I'm doing a good job. And maybe this is something I need to work on. But for me, it's a, a lot about the thrill of opening it up and kind of putting it in my, you know, kind of, like if you, if you move into a house, imagine not unpacking your boxes for a month. You want to unpack that same moment. I know, it doesn't make sense in the plant world, I'm just trying to justify, which is something that I do. Okay, look at that. This is a pleasant surprise. Green roots. These were the new roots, which is what I suspected. They were coming out, but look at that rhizome. Looks good. I don't see any part that is bad. Maybe this, maybe this root needs a little cutting because it's turning black maybe this one. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these roots. Hmm, I'm gonna cut a couple of these roots 
just the ones that don't look good because she has plenty of great roots. Now that's that's a good surprise because I thought I was just, you know, buying it for the channel, for the for the episode so I can show you and talk about bag babies, but I'm pretty happy with it. I am pretty happy with it. And look at these. Look at this. When you have this, no. Oh my goodness, the wind. Everything is flying. Everything is flying. When you have this, okay, usually the flower has spots, which is what I've noticed. It's on my spotted charm and my spotted clown. So I'm already getting the idea that the mount I was gonna use for my Basavala mix, I mean cross, is gonna be the one that I put this on. Why? Because this one's ready to go. So, yes, I'm gonna cut a couple of roots, just a couple. I'm gonna spray with hydrogen peroxide and I'm gonna show you that mount to see if um, if we get this done today. I wasn't planning on doing it today. Just, you know, just to talk about the tips, but you know what, while we're at it, why not? Quick little, quick little reminder. When you're using your cutting tool, whichever one you use, okay, you need to disinfect it, okay? If you cut other plants, other orchids and they have anything, if they have a virus or if they have some kind of bacteria thing going on, some kind of fungus, whatever it is, it can be transmitted from one orchid to the next. So you wanna make sure. So one simple way that you can do it, I'm not sure if it's 100%, I've heard that it's not, but it does help, is the alcohol. Spraying alcohol, let it sit for a little bit, rubbing it, spraying it again, that's how I do it. Um, but if you want to be a pro, you're going to get yourself one of those creme brulee flaming torchy things. And um, it has to be the blue flame is what I heard. You can't just get a normal, a normal lighter, I guess. It has to be the powerful flame. And that really, really disinfects the proper way. I kind of um, am a little risky and I just do the alcohol very well but you guys can do whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, almost dropped her. Okay, so I gave her a bath. Now I'm spraying the roots with the hydrogen peroxide, 3%. I mean, what a pleasant surprise. I think she looks really, really good. I know there might be some of you that are like, oh, she's got this, she's got that. I can handle that. I can handle her, she'll be fine. She'll be just fine. We need to be positive. We need to be positive. So, oh, I see a little eye. So she is growing that way. She is growing that way. So now I have to decide, maybe I can put her like this. And these are the two mounts that I have right now from the Orchid Supply Store. So you can order these if you like them. Look how pretty. I had in mind this one, but now I'm thinking with her awesome possum roots, she's outgrown this already and she's not even on here. Oh my gosh, I put spray. I sprayed. The mosquitoes are crazy. I also have this. Oh my gosh. I think this is it. Or, oh yes. I think this is it, guys. Thank you, Ken, from the Orchid Supply Store. Isn't this a beautiful mount? And I know she's gonna love this. So, let's just see. I wanna put her in a way that she can continue growing this way and growing that way. So I'm gonna have to attach her something like this. I didn't even real, look, I didn't even think of this little mounting, this little project or, I didn't even imagine that I'd be doing this today. But guess what? Things happen for a reason. So we are gonna mount this today. Let's do it. I'm gonna have to change the camera angle because uh, I can't do it like this. Hold on. Okay guys, I am back and I'm doing something that I usually do last, which is make a tiny hole in my tag. 
And I just take my shears and kind of um, just do this. Make a tiny hole because I have a tiny zip tie and I put the names on the back. See? Yes. All right. So here we go. Here is the beautiful mount. By the way, if you want to order anything, you can save 12% with my name. Oof, this might not be easy, but it's okay. And I think that I'm gonna need two zip ties because now I only have these that are, I think these are eight inches. And I also have my moss, which you can also get at the Orchid Supply Store. I've wet it. This is the new, I was gonna say New England. <laughs> This is the, oh my goodness, now I've said it wrong and I don't remember. New Zealand, oh my gosh, New Zealand. So yes, my goal is to make a little bed. Okay, and I might be adding some more moss in the crevices around the roots because this poor plant Sometimes when you mount them, they go through a little bit of decline because they have been in media and then all of a sudden they're not. So I know that a lot of times, even when you put the moss, it'll fall out eventually, you know? The moss will fall out. That's what happens sometimes. But you know what? It's kind of okay because it takes that time to acclimate and then when it acclimates, and it's fine. Okay, so I am going to I put the zip tie. Where is the hole? Here it is. I'm trying to see if one zip tie will do it, but it's pretty wide. So I don't think one zip tie will do it. I'm gonna have to do both. So you, I put one in through the back and then attach these two together. And you gotta be very strategic so you don't mess anything up. I don't want to squeeze the heck out of it either, but I want to make sure that I have a good grip, but she can keep on growing. Let's see, let's see. I really don't like to grab the roots in there. My goal is usually to grab it by the rhizome and secure it that way. So let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. And it's trial and error. There's gonna be times when you have to cut the zip tie and start again. And zip ties are cheap, so it doesn't matter. It's okay. And if you grab a couple of roots in there, it's fine too. It'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Don't be afraid to experiment and to mount and to do different things because that's the only way you know. Okay. Now, I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to do something to tie this bundle on because I don't think any of this moss is gonna stay longer than five minutes <laughs> if I don't do something else. So I might do, I don't know, maybe I'll do that little baggy thing here and just put, I know, this is really helpful. If you don't have any of this, um, what do they call it? Agricultural Velcro, plant Velcro, whatever it is. See, I can use this temporarily until the roots start to grab hold of the of the wood, of the mount, which they always do. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. So you put it where you want it, and then you cut it. And you can reuse that Velcro on something else when it's done doing its job and you see that um, that it doesn't need it anymore. So the last step here would be to tighten up a little bit if it needs it. You cut those zip ties down a little bit. Leave a little bit just in case you need to pull it later as things shift things shift and then sometimes if you cut it all the way down then you won't be able to tighten up. Yay! That's the little test. She 
She looks so good. Doesn't she look awesome? I am so happy with this. I'm so happy. This was unexpected. Thanks to you guys, I went out there and I went looking for, and look at how this is the, <laughs> this is the tallest section and the mount matches it perfectly. I mean, how lucky did I get? Take a close look. Look at the huge roots. I was thinking I was getting something that was half dead, but I was gonna do it anyway, but look, she looks great. And it seems that she was made for this mount. Now my last thing would be, well, I have hangers. I have one right here. S hangers. And since all these mounts come pre-hold, you don't have to worry about it. That is it. She's gonna hang in my orchid pergola. I am so happy to have her. I love this kind. I did look up that they were a primary hybrid, a mix of a Clandier and Gotura, Gotura, something like that, which I don't even know, I've never heard of, but I'm gonna do some more researching now that I have her. So let me grab one more little zip tie. I even went to this um, very cheap, oh my God, let me not call it cheap, economical website and I got these a five pack for like a dollar something this is the velcro this this one was from home depot for like seven dollars and then I got this for like one dollar and eighty cents so little tiny zip tie that's how I do it you can do it however you like and I usually put them in I put it on the back I put her name on the back I go through underneath the zip tie and every time I need to know what she is, I turn her around or him or whatever. And I usually have the tag right there. That's it. LC Land Date Charm. And um, upon Googling it, I think that there's been a name change yet again. Catlea Land Date Charm Spots. There you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this um, tips on buying bag babies and little mount, unexpected mounts. You know what? Sometimes things are better spontaneous. Let me scoop back. Yay! Look how pretty. I love it. I love it. So, cooperate. She's not going to cooperate. You're not going to be able to see me. She's not going to cooperate. Let me just take it off of the... Okay, guys, so I want to say goodbye. I want to say thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching the videos. Thank you for giving me ideas on more videos. And if you have any more ideas, share them with me. I love taking you guys shopping and um, seeing what I can find and then coming home. And we evaluate and get creative. So if you enjoyed this video, please um, like it. Share it with your friends, whoever likes orchids, or if you think that they might like orchids, if you share it do that as well because you never know you have an, a closet orchid lover in your friends or family group so i will see you next time the next time is probably going to be at the ofi's orchid fair see you later bye